Hello coders and thanks for joining us for part 6 of the Dynamic UI tutorial series. Today we're going to be continuing our discussion on the button brancher system and today I'm going to be focusing on telling you guys and teaching you how to create this sliding out animation that you can see here where we're going to have the button spawning on top of our button brancher and then sliding out in the direction that we want. Okay so let's jump in the, into the code real quick and see how this is going to be accomplished. Now if you remember from the last tutorial we talked about briefly how our um, our animations are going to be called. So what we do first as a reminder is to check to see if we're opening. If we are we're going to spawn the buttons and then run these switch statements on um, our button brancher to see which animations we should run. So we're going to be focusing on if we're using a linear option and if that linear options reveal style is slide to position. So let's look at this method here, reveal linearly normal. Okay, so what we're doing in reveal linear, linearly normal is first looping through the buttons list, which we populated in the uh, public void spawn buttons method, which was talked about um, in the previous tutorial. And as we're looping through this buttons list, we're going to be creating a target position for each button. So we create this vector3 target pause, and then we're going to create a rect transform button rect, which is the reference to the current button's um, rect transform component. And the way we access this is by this line here. What we're doing with the button rect is modifying the size delta member, and with, and the size delta is a vector2, which can be used to uh, modify the width and the height of our buttons. Keep in mind that if you're using size delta to modify width and height, the anchors of that button need to be all together in one spot. Okay. Now what we're doing is we're pulling the data from our button scalar class, the new button size dot x and the new button size dot y, which are going to correlate to the width and the height of our button. Now button scalar, um, button scalar, lens spawner, all of these classes that you're seeing using the dot operator, these were classes that we talked about in the previous tutorials. So if you need to catch up on that, go ahead and check those tutorials out first. All right, but moving forward, so we modify the width and the height of the button since our screen size can be changing dynamically. And after we do that, we're setting the target positions value. So the way I do this is I set the dot x, dot y, and dot z independently of each other just so we can outline what it is that we're doing with each um, each component of the vector three. And note that dot z is going to be zero since we're not dealing with any depth, so we're just going to be dealing with x and y. Okay, so let's dissect this line of code. This line of code is going to be finding the position that our buttons are going to be, be moving at. So it, it is a uh, major component in the sliding or any re really any animation that we're going to be dealing with the button brancher on. Okay, so what we do is we we say the lens spawner dot direction. So we're getting the direction of uh, the button brancher. We're getting the x component so we can see which direction on the x axis that we want to move in. Um, and we're multiplying this by the i plus lens spawner dot button num offset. The button num offset is a value that's going to uh, be modified if we want our buttons to start off being branched um, at some distance away from the button brancher itself. And then we're going to multiply this by size delta plus the button spacing. Okay, so size delta, remember, size delta dot x will be the width, size delta dot y will be the height. We're multiplying it by the width plus any spacing that we want to have in between our buttons. And finally, we're adding all of these values to our transform.position, which, remember, is the actual button brancher itself. Okay, so since we talked about that, let's take a look at a diagram to see if we can better understand how this is working. In the top left of this diagram, you'll see that we have uh, a direction vector. So this is going to be any combination of x and y. So it can be in any 2D direction. And that's going to be multiplied, if you remember, by, um, by i plus the button num offset. So if we have a button num offset, just imagine that we're actually adding 1 to i. Okay, so in this diagram, we actually have uh, an offset of 1 since our first button isn't actually on top of the button brancher. And I outlined that the button brancher is actually equal to the transform.position since that's what we're adding everything to. Then I outlined that button spacing is the space between the buttons naturally and button.size delta in this case is going to refer to the width of the button. Okay, so let's look back at our code. 
after we have all of this, um, after we have the size delta and the target position of our button laid out, we can finally lerp to that target position with our button. So what we're going to do is we're going to say button rec dot position, which is the current position the button is at, equals vector three dot lerp, and vector three dot lerp is going to take three arguments. The first argument is going to be the current position that we're moving from. The second parameter is going to be the position that we're moving to. And the third parameter is going to be how fast we want to move from our current position to our target position. This is going to be reveal settings that translate smooth, which is a, a, a variable that we modify from the inspector. And we're going to be sure that we multiply that times time dot delta time. The reason is because we're working in the update function. And the update function requires this time dot delta time if we want our uh, variables to not be affected by frame rate. If we don't use time by delta time, our uh, translate smooth or the the rate at which our buttons move is going to be completely dependent upon our current frame rate. So if our frame rate is faster, our buttons are going to move faster, and if our frame rate is slower, our buttons are going to move slower. Okay, so that's the purpose of time by delta time. All right, so once we have this method figured out. The behavior that you should expect to see from your button brancher is this right here, where the buttons are spawning on top of the button brancher and sliding out in the direction that we want. Now let's modify some of these variables so that we can see in action what it is they're actually doing. So the button brancher that we're actually looking at right now, this button brancher right here, um, its current direction is negative one zero. Okay, so it's moving backwards on neg uh, on the x axis and it's not moving anywhere on the y axis. So let's modify the y. Let's say that we want the button brancher to move down uh, slightly and move to the left. So what we'll do is we'll say negative 0 0.5. And you can see over here that they actually did uh, move down on the left side of the screen here. And we can modify this to see how we can affect it. Okay, so we can we can really change this. We can really make it go in any direction that we want just by modifying these direction values. All right, so you guys can see how this is working. I'm only modifying the x and the y component of the direction vector. All right, I'll reset these back to the default that I had them at. Now the other uh, the other two variables that I wanted to talk about was base nut uh, base button spacing and button num offset. Okay, so let's talk about button num offset first. As you can see, I have this set to one currently. Now if I set this back to zero, you'll see that this red button, which is the first button in the button brancher list, will be set back to the button brancher's position. And the reason is because it's starting off on that position. So if I modify this to zero, you can see that that first button moved back to the button brancher position. If I move this over to two, you can see it moves over at an offset of two buttons, and that first button doesn't have a space in it, or that first space for a button doesn't have any buttons in it. So we can modify this. Um, this is really really helpful whenever we have multiple branches happening in our button branching system. Okay, now to uh, to show off the button or the base button spacing variable, I need to actually restart the uh, the program because I don't have it, I don't have that variable updating in the button brancher script. So I'm going to find my prefab for that button brancher and I'm going to go over here in the inspector. I'm going to change the button spacing to something that's really noticeable like 50. And you'll see that when I run this, the spacing of the buttons will be um, quite noticeable. Okay, so it's actually this second button brancher here. And you can see how far spaced these are apart. If I click on this one, you can see how close they are. I'll click on this one, you can see how far apart they are now. Okay, so that's going to be our button spacing variable. So I'll go ahead and change this back to the default. All right, and that's actually going to conclude this tutorial. In the next tutorials, I'm going to be continuing uh, talking and teaching you guys how you can create more animations. Uh, just to look into the future, let's look at some of the animations that we're going to be working with later down the road. And the ones that I'm most excited about is going to be the circular spawner. Okay, so this is a pretty cool one that you guys are going to be learning about in the future. So, as I said before, that's going to conclude this tutorial. If you liked it, go ahead and drop a like. If you haven't subscribed yet and you're liking this, these videos, go ahead and support us and subscribe to our channel for more awesome tutorials on this sort of stuff. As always, though, this has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.